Okay, so um, I think it's not the first time we are looking at Bible gas. From the beginning of um, uh, Design 3, we looked at the various types of gears and then uh, there are applications where they are used. So you still have to consult it to uh, know where bevel gears are used. And there are different types of bevel gears, okay? And all depends on what is being used for. So you can still refer to it. We have it when, somewhere from the beginning of the uh, lecture material. So now we are going to look at bevel gears in detail. All right, so um, the gear, if you look at the bevel gear, it's, it's in the form of a, the frustrum of a cone, all right? Or it's like a truncated cone. That is how it is in general. And the dimensions of a bevel gear have been illustrated in this figure here. So we have in this figure 4.1, a and B, we have them and then there, there are certain terms in level gears that we need to define. Right? Some of them are similar to what we define in spare gears, but they have some features that we also need to know. So um, the first thing that we're going to look at is what you call the pit cone, the pit cone. And a pitch cone is an imaginary cone, the surface of which contains the pitch lines of all things in the bubble gear. So if we look at this um, diagram here, figure 4.1a, the pitch cone is that cone which contains, all right, this is the cone where we have said the imaginary cone where we have, um, which contain the pit line of all the teeth. And we can show it from this side. Um, you see this line here, uh, this line, which is going that way. And then the one from here going this way, all right? This is the pitch line. And the cone formed by the pitch line is what we call the pit cone. And that is from this, the angle from here, all right? That cone from there up to this one. I hope you're okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Are you following? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. yes sir. Good. All right. So the pitch cone is this cone here. This is the pitch line. The one in the center that way. And then the other one here is the pitch line. So that cone formed by these two pitch lines is what we call the pitch cone. Okay. Then um, the next thing is the cone center. And the cone center is this point over here, that point is the cone center. All right, so yeah, if you look at the double gear, in this case, we have, please, please mute your microphone. So we have this um, line here, okay, this form the bevel gear. So it is showing a section of the bevel gear. Let me try and get you a picture of it so that it will um, give us proper understanding of the subject.
Hello, are you on? Yes, sir. All right, I'm coming. Hello. Hello. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so um let's look at so this is the bevel gear. All right, so in this gear we have the as I'm explaining from here, this is showing a session. This is showing, showing a session of the gear. And um, we have, first of all, the pitch cone. And that pitch cone to the pitch circle of the bevel gear is along the center of the gear tooth, okay? That way, so if you draw lines from all of these pitch um, in circles, right? It will be forming something like a cone. Let me say something like a cone. And this cone is what we call the pitch cone, okay? Then uh, we, the um, cone center, the cone center O is that center where all the cones will be, I mean, all the cones are having, or let's say that the concentric center of all the cones that forms the uh, bevel gear. All right, so for instance, uh, if you look at this one, if you look at the shape of the teeth, you see that if we continue forming the teeth, is they are going to converge at one center. And that is what you call the cone center. And the, uh, the cone center is usually designated with the letter O, that's the cone center, okay. Then we also have, um, we also have the cone distance. We have the cone distance, and the cone distance um, is the length. The cone distance is the length of the pit cone element, and it is also called the pit cone radius. All right, and it's donated by. O, A, O, the letter A, O. So we can see it from this side here, the cone distance, right? So that is a distance from the cone center 
the distance of the cone center up to hello up to the back hi okay up to the back of the cone and is that distance measured along the pitch core okay so that is measured along the pitch cone and we know that the pitch cone is formed by this uh, dotted lines here that form the pitch cone if the cone distance is the length from that point up to that point and we use the uh, letter the uh, variables a o to represent the cone distance then we also have the the pitch angle we have the pitch angle and the pitch angle which is denoted by the letter uh, gamma is this angle here right we you can see the angle from between the horizontal and then the pitch line so that angle this angle here is the um pitch angle then we also have the um addendum angle and the addendum angle we can also see it a second please let me Please uh, stop annotating on the screen. Okay, so let's continue. So we also have the addendum and the addendum angle is the angle subtended by the addendum at the cone center and it is denoted by alpha. So we can see the addendum angle. So the angle subtended by the addendum at the cone center all right, so this is the addendum angle. And of course, it's between the addendum and the pit angle. That's the addendum angle. And then we also have the addendum angle, which is denoted by um, delta. And that one is the angle subtended by the addendum at the cone center, by the addendum at the cone center and that is this angle here right so that angle is between the pit uh, line and then we have the uh, the pit line and then this line here okay that is the the dendum angle subtended so between the dendum then the pitch line. Then we also have the face angle and the face angle is the angle subtended by the face of the tooth at the cone center. All right, so the face angle, we know it as the angle subtended by the face of the tooth at the cone center. 
and that is the angle from this the horizontal and then the face of the gear okay so this angle from this point up to that point is the face angle and this is the face of the uh, bubble gear and we can determine that to be equal to the pit angle plus the addendum angle so the pit angle is this one all right so the pit angle is this angle made by the pit and then this line here gamma and then the addendum angle is this small angle here so the addition of the two gives us the face angle then we also have the root angle and it is the angle subtended by the root of the uh, of the tooth at the cone center the angle subtended by the root of the tooth at the cone center and that is that is what forms the root angle so we know the root of the cone this is the root this line here is the root and then the um, root angle is the angle between that root line and then the horizontal. So the angle subtended by the uh, root of the tooth at the cone center is the root angle. And that one is equal to the pit angle minus the dundum angle. So the pitch angle is that one minus the dendum angle. We give us the root angle. All right, so root angle. <clears throat> then we also have the back cone. The back cone, if you look at this uh, diagram here, if we look at this one, you will see that uh, the back of it, okay, the back of it due to how it's been designed, the back of it is also forming a cone, all right? It's forming a cone. And that is, if we draw straight lines from this area here, they will all converge at a point. They will converge at a point. And that means that <clears throat> it's forming another cone. And we can see that in this diagram here. You can see it from here. So when we draw a straight line from this side and that side is forming that cone, All right? And then the back, we also have the, this back cone is having an angle, which is this one here, okay? Yeah. And then the back cone has a distance. We have it, we call it the back cone distance. So this one should be back cone distance. And it is the length of the back cone element. And um, we can donate that by using the uh, variable RB. It is also called the back cone radius. So the length of the back cone element, which is also called the back cone radius, is the back cone distance. And we can determine that from this point to the Pitch, all right, the pitch point on the gear. So that is the back cone radius. Any question? <laughs> mm. Okay, so. Is that, is that what? Hello. Any question? Yes. Okay, so we can continue then. All right, so um, 
we are going to look at force analysis in double gears. We are looking at force analysis in double gears. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Good. All right, so we're going to look at uh, force analysis, double gears. All right. So in this case, we have um, a, a force diagram. When bevel gears are in mesh, when they are in mesh, you will see that, um, let me show you this diagram here. Um, Look at this diagram. See when we have two, uh, so we have two gears that are in mesh. You see that um, this one, the axis of this gear, for instance, let's say it's vertical, right? In this direction. And that one is horizontal. Now forces from this gear is transmitted or they are transmitted to the other one as they are in mesh and as they rotate, okay? So one will be driving the other. Either we have the pinion, which is a smaller bevel gear, driving the main gear or the gear driving the pinion. And whatever the case may be, we always have forces in play at the point where they are meshing, okay? And we try to resolve these forces. First, there will be a radial force, All right? That radial force will be trying to uh, act radially to each of the gear components. So for instance, if you take the pinion, there'll be a force that will be acting radially, okay? That is acting perpendicular to the axis of the gear. Then there'll be an axial component of the force too, 
which will be acting in line with the axis of the um, gear for the pinion. When we take the uh, gear to, you see that the easier component on the pinion will be the uh, radial component for the gear. And the same at the same time, the easier comp the radial component of the pinion will be the easier component for the gear. I hope we can see that. Then um, we will also have the force which will uh, transmit the power from one gear to the other. And that will be the tangential force. Okay, and that one acts tangentially to the pitch circle on the gear. Or right, tangential to the pitch cone. That force will be tangential to the pitch cone. Then, uh, so those are the forces that we are going to have. So we have easier force, the radial, we have the tangential, then we also have the force, which will try to separate the two gears. All right, and that is the separating force. Yes? Please, can you choose a different color for your pointer? Okay. All right. Oh, the, my pointer is not clear on the screen. So it's, it is, but you skip the point. You are not able to follow very well. Ah, okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't have a different color. I can only change the color of the... Uh, say, yes, this one is okay. All right, good. So I'm saying that when these gears are mentioned, there are some uh, forces that will be in play, okay? And first, we are going to have radial components and an easier component. And assuming these gears are mentioned, the load is transmitted along the pitch line, okay, or the pitch cone. So that's the pitch cone in the center here, All right? So, we, will, we are going to have um, different components of the forces about this pitch cone. So one, there will be the radial component and that radial component is the uh, force that will be acting radially to the gear. So let's take the pinion, which is a smaller gear that will be the radial component of the force on the pinion. That radial component on the force on the pinion will have a reaction on the gear, okay? So because they are meshing, we have the actions and reaction to be equal and opposite. And that means that there will be a force also acting on the gear in this direction. And these two forces will need to balance up for equilibrium, which means that the radial component of the force in the, on the pinion is the same as the easier component of the force on the gear. Are we okay? Then the radial component of the force on the gear, which will also be acting in, say, in this direction, be the same as the easier component of the force that will be acting on the pinion. Then at the point where they are mentioned, we have what you call the separating force. Now that, that separation force, the separating force is the uh, force that will try to disengage the gears, okay? And that will be acting, that will be acting at that point. Then we also have the force which we call the tangential force. The tangential force is the force that will cause useful work, okay? Or that will be able to transmit the power from the pinion to the gear or vice versa. And that is a tangential force. And the tangential force uh, usually acts along the pressure line, okay? so. And it's that pressure, I mean that the tangential force is tangential to the cone 
uh, the, the pitch cone, standing shot of the pitch cone of the table. All right, so with, with that basic understanding, let's look at how we share. follow, no, uh, read. Uh, one more comment that watching the league fake life. Uh, Michel video no so now can I confirm the or did you social media like Facebook likes? Please, please mute your microphone. Eh? <laughs> Are you okay? Okay, so let's hide it somewhere. Now let's look at this diagram here. So um, here we've isolated just one um, gear, okay? And this gear, we have the pitch uh, cone, the pitch cone of the pinion. So that is a cone of the pinion, that is a cone along the pit uh, line that has been removed, isolated alone here. So we have the apex of the pitch cone, which is the cone center. It's, it's located at this point. So we have the cone center located here. That's the cone center. Okay. Then um, there is a point which we call the, where we have all the, uh, we have the load to be concentrated. Then from that point, we can resolve the forces on the cone, All right? So if we take this point to be where the forces are concentrated, uh, we can have the tangential component, which will provide the useful work to be PT. So here we have P T to be equal to the, the tangential, the tangential force. Okay. And that one will be in Newtons. Then we also have um, P R. So P R is um, at this point, this is P R. So P R here is equal to the, is the radial component. So so that's the radial component of force on the pinion. And then we also have the axial component PA. So PA is the axial component. Remember, this is the axis of the pinion. So we have the axis OX as the axis on the, of the pinion. All right, so the axial component to be acting in line with the axis of the pinion then we have the radial component acting to be perpendicular to the axis of the pinion. So the axial, the axial component of the uh, force, which will be acting on the pinion is the PR. Then we also have the separating uh, component or the separating force. And the separating force is say PS. So the PS will try to separate the separating force. So that will try to separate the two gears, okay? Let's try to push them apart so that they will separate. And uh, the Having this uh, four components, we can identify them here. We have PA, the axial component, PR, the radial component, the separating component, PS, and then PT, the tangential component, which will provide a useful uh, work or transfer of power. Okay. Now, if we consider the plane A, B, C, D on this one, A, B, C, 
and D, if you consider that plane, okay, on that plane, you could see that we have the separating component acting as well as the um, tangential component acting. If you consider this plane, we can say that tan alpha, where alpha is the um, pressure angle, where alpha is the pressure angle, will be equal to BC divided by CD, okay? Tan of this angle will be BC divided by CD. So in that case, you're going to have tan alpha to be equal to BC over CD. And this will give us, if you write it in a different form, it's going to be PS, PS, which is BC, that component, because we are having something like a, a rectangle. If we take that plane out, it will form something like a rectangle. It will form a rectangle like this. Okay, then on this rectangle, say we have here to be, let's take this point to be A, and we take here to be B, C, and D. And we have this uh, pressure line, okay, the angle between the tangential component the angle is here, which is alpha. And then this component CD is PT. And then we have BC, BA, because PT, which is the tangential component, the same as this one. And then the separating component ES is also the same as the, yes. hello? Are you following? Hello. Are you following? Hi, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so um the turn of the angle alpha will equal to BC divided by C D, which is the same as uh, PT. Sorry, it's the same as PS divided by PT, are we in agreement? Yes, sir. So from here we can say that the separating force is equal to the tangential component tan of the pressure angle, which is alpha. And, and uh, this thing that I brought out, this diagram here is what we have over here. So we have the PS, this is the pressure angle. And then we have the PT, so the PT is here. And then that force which will be acting along that one is P, that P force, or let's say the diagonal. All right. So P is, let's say that P is the resultant force, is the resultant. Okay, that, that P, we can say that in the case of spare gear, when we're looking at spare gear, we, we looked at the force we call the normal force. Do you remember? When you have the normal force to be acting normally today, and that will be acting normal to the face of the gear teeth. So we resolve that force into two components, the horizontal component and the vertical, uh, the vertical component. So the horizontal component we're calling the um, WT and then the WR is the radial component. And the WT is what will cause the useful um, work or that will transmit the power. 
But in that case, you see that we're not having easier forces in the case of the spare gears. Because in the easier direction, there is no restriction. So if you should push this one spare gear against the other easily, it will just slide on top. But in this particular case, there's restriction in the easier direction. And that is where the easier force is coming in. Okay. Again, the separating force PS is perpendicular to the pitch line O to D. So we have OD here. This is OD, that is a pitch line. And this separating force is perpendicular to that uh, pitch line. And therefore, we can say that the line AD and OD are perpendicular lines. Line FD is vertical. The line FD is a vertical line which will cause the ACL, the, the radial component on the pinion. And while we have the OX, the OX line is horizontal. So again, we can also say that the FD line and then the OX line are also perpendicular. So there are two pairs of perpendicular lines and they are Included angle should be equal. Okay. The included angle should be equal. The angle between line OD and OX should be equal to the angle between line A to D and the line FD. Are we okay? Mm. Hello. Oh, hello. Yes. yes, sir. Sir, please go over it again. We have two set of particular lines here. The line, the line OD. All right, we have the line OD to be perpendicular to the line AD. We are in agreement, okay? So if OD from here to that point is perpendicular to AD. And we also said that the line FD is perpendicular to the line OX. So if that is the case, it means that the angle between line OD to line OD and the line OX should be equal to the angle between line AD and FD. That is where we are having this angle here. So we're saying that A, D, and F, D should have an angle gamma equal to this gamma here. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I isolate it, we have something like this. Let's draw the two. Say so we have X and this is the point O. Then we have this one here. Uh, let's call this, um, let's call it, we have D. Let's say we have point D somewhere here, D. Okay, and we're saying that the line AD, so let's draw this one too here. So let's say this is A. So AD is perpendicular to OD, okay? And then we have another line, which is perpendicular to OX, the line OX, and that line is F to D. So let's say we have here to be F. We have FD. So now this FD, if we extend this line here, it will make an angle of 90 degrees to the line O, X. 
And we're saying that the angle here, which is gamma, is the same as the angle over here, which should also be gamma. Hmm? Okay, so with that understanding, we can draw this um, other diagram that we have here, which is this one. Okay, so in that case, we can say that A to D, AF will form an angle equal to gamma. And we have the tangent, the radial component, right, the radial component of the force to be PR, and then the separating component, PS, and then the axial component, PA. Are we in agreement? And from that, we can also say that we are going to have um, we are going to have we are going to have a PR, in this case, PR uh, will be equal to PS cos gamma. And we can see it from here that the PR will be equal to PS cos gamma. Then PA will also be equal to PS sine gamma, okay? So um, with these two, we can substitute it into, if we substitute equation, that equation we developed earlier, where we have um, P, S is equal to TT cos alpha. Okay, let's say this is equation one. Let's call it two and that's three. All right, so if we know the values of PS, we can put them into these equations and say that PR um, will be equal to P T, okay, cos alpha, cos gamma. And then we Fair. can also say that. Say yes. hey. Speak. Please. Uh, the PS, you wrote a uh, P T tan. Alpha. Yeah, yeah, that is done. Sorry. So we have done alpha here. So this will be, if you put that into this equation, so if we substitute, okay, if we Substitute uh, equation one into two and three. We are going to have uh, PR to be equal to uh, PT than alpha cos gamma. And then we're going to have P A to be equal to P T and alpha sine sin gamma. So this will be the 
two equations which relate the radial component and then the axial component of the forces to the tangential uh, component of the forces. All right, so from here, the tangential component is determined from a relation tangential component, we can say that PT is equal to MT divided by RM. And we have the MT, okay? This MT is the torque. The torque that is transmitted by the gears. The torque transmitted by the gears. And this RM also refers to the radius of the pinion at midpoint along the face width of the pinion. So this is radius at midpoint along the face width. Okay, so this one here is the definition of the RM. So if we know these two, uh, we can determine the load that is to be transmitted, that is the tangential load. And then if you also know the pressure angles, and then we know the cone angles, gamma and, and gamma, alpha and gamma, we could also determine the is the component and then the radial component of the force that is to be transmitted. Okay, so the RM, uh, which we can say that is the main radius. We can determine RM, it's a uh, cone, okay, or the, along the pitch line. And to determine that, we say that that distance is given by um, Rm R -M is equal to the line AC minus AB, okay? And uh, the AC I'm referring to is here. This is the cone for the gear, we have AC here, which is that line AC minus the line A to B. Now I'll give you the RM, okay? And the AC, the line AC, we can say that is equal to DP on two. A to C is equal to DP on two, where the D is talking about the diameter of the pinion, the diameter of the pinion, which we defined earlier as the, um, the is it a cone distance D? That is the pitch circle diameter. So the pitch circle diameter for the pinion. 
to the physical diameter for the pinion is the dp and half of it to give you the distance of the line um, ac which is the radius okay then we also have the line ab divided by b on two to be equal to sine of gamma where gamma in this case is that angle okay that cone angle and um, we know that the B on two, the distance from here to the point where we are determining the main radius, okay? So we can say that if we want to determine the angle gamma, it related to AB and B on two by this. So we say that AB divided by B on two is equal to the sine of gamma, or we can say that we have the line AB, so line AB to be equal to B on two sine of gamma. And if we take this one here, Okay, if we take this one and then this value and substitute into this equation. Okay, so let's call this one uh, A. If we take B and then C and substitute into A, we are going to have the value for Rm to be equal to D P on two minus B on two sine gamma. And this will form the equation with which we can determine the uh, RM, the main radius. The D, the DP, we know it's at the pitch circle diameter for the pinion. But the B, what is the B? The B is the face width. The face width of the tooth in millimeters. So we have DP as the pitch. circle diameter and then the B is the uh, face width okay of the pinion. As a face width of the pinion. If we have these parameters, we could determine the RM. And if we have RM, then it means that we have RM and then the top transmitted, we could have the other parameters that we need for the gear. Okay. So, what I was trying to explain earlier is this. If you check this, you will see that the force or the separating force, which you try to separate them, PS, is acting right in this direction that is going that direction. So they are the same. And again, if you look at this diagram here, you see, you will see that let's say this is the pinion and this is the gear. The separating force is the same. The radial component of the force here, okay, will be equal to the 
easier component of this one, which will be this component here. Then the easier component of the force on the pinion will be the same as the radial component on the gear. Then uh, we have the PT, which is the transmitted um, or the tangential component of the force to be the same also for both gears. Any question? Any question? Okay, so um, let's look at this. If we decide to isolate them, the pinion, let's take the pinion for example, from what we've done so far, first component on the pinion, We can say that um, there are some things to determine, okay, on the pinion. One, we need the moment, empty. We need the radius, RM. The empty is the torque, transmitted torque. And we need the tangential component of the force. And then we also need PR, which is a radial component. We need PA, the Asia component. And we said that PT is equal to the MT on RM. Okay. RM, we've defined it to be equal to. Um, to be dp on two minus b sine gamma b sine gamma on two mt what is mt mt is the power sorry the torque that is being transmitted and the torque, we know that the formula for the torque, if we know is the power, we know that power is equal to 2 pi nt on 60. If we're given the RPM. Okay, so from this, we can say that the T is 60P divided by 2 pi N. And this case is N for the pinion. So for the pinion, the MT is 60P divided by 2 pi NP. So this is the power. And we also have been able to establish that PT is equal to tan of the pressure angle cos gamma, which is the cone angle. And then we also have PA to be equal to PT. So this one is PT. B is equal to PT, tan of the pressure angle, sine gamma. So these are the forces 
Are we okay? Hello. Yes, sir, we are okay. Yes, sir, we are okay. Okay. So these are some things that you should note. Pay attention as I read it for you. So the direction of the tangential component for a driving gear is opposite to the direction of rotation. The direction of tangential component for a driving gear is opposite to the direction of rotation. The direction of tangential component for the driven gear is same as the direction of rotation. The direction of tangential component for the driven gear is the same as the direction of rotation. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. No, sir. The direction of tangential component for the driving gear is opposite to the direction of rotation. So let's say that we have Okay, let's say we have a driving gear. So the driving gear is actually the gear that is driving. So let's pick this as the cone. Then uh, this gear is driving. So as it's driving, let's say that it's rotating in this direction. Okay. It's rotating in this direction. And see that the direction of rotation of tangential component for the driving gear. Okay, the direction of rotation of the tangential component for the driving gear. So if this is the driving gear, it's rotating in this direction. The component of force, which is a tangential component of the force, is opposite to the direction of rotation. So it means that if it's driving in this direction, the tangential force is opposite to the direction of rotation and the driving gear. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And also the easier component on the K 
pinion acts toward the center of the pinion. Now I think I explained it. The easier component on the pinion, the easier component on the pinion acts toward the center of the pinion. So if we take this one as the pinion, the easier component on this pinion, so the radial component on the pinion, so the radial component to be acting towards the center. So that's the center line for the pinion. The radial component is going to act toward the center. And then at the same time, the radial component in the gear acts toward the center of the gear, the same. And then the thrust component on the pinion is equal and opposite to the radial component on the gear. So if we have the gear, which is, let's say, formed from this diagram, like that. So let's say, We have something like this. Okay. The radial component here on the gear, same as the easier component. So they are equal and opposite. The same thing happens here the radial component here, the easier component is same as the radial component. So they are also equal and opposite. All right. Let's look at an example. Do we still have time? Hello. Yes. We have less than 20 minutes. Okay, so let's look at some simple example. Okay, so there is this diagram here. Let me share it with you. Can you see it? Hello? Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's look at this one. A pair of bevel gears transmit 7.5 kilowatts of, at, at 300 RPM as shown in this diagram. The pressure angle is 20 degrees. Determine the component of the resultant gear to force and draw a free body diagram of forces acting on the pinion and the gear. So we have the forces, the load on it, all right, the load on the gears have been given. We know the speed 
of the pinion have been given, the power from the pinion has been given, and we have to determine um, the values given. A minute, please. Hello. Aida. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, we did. Ah, okay, good. All right, so let's look at this example. So in this one, we have been given um, the opinion, the power to be transmitted P to be equal to 7.5 kilowatt. We have the speed on the pinion. The speed on the pinion is 300 RPM. And then we also have 
um, the pressure angle alpha to be equal to 20 degrees. What else? Okay, the peak circle diameter for the gear. Let's say DG. DG was given us 200. Let's say millimeters. And then we also have DP to be equal to 150 millimeters. So um, from um, what we have, we are to determine the components of the resultant gear tooth force and also draw a free body diagram and show the forces acting on the pinion and the gear, which means that we need to calculate the tangential force as well, apart from the resultant force. We also need to calculate the ACL and then the radial forces and be able to draw a diagram to show the direction at which these forces are acting. Is that correct? We know the face width. The face width was given to us 40 millimeters. That one too has been given. So we can go ahead and start with the calculations. So from here, uh, we can, first of all, determine the torque to be transmitted. And the torque to be transmitted We know the formula for the torque to be transmitted as what? What's the formula? So MT is equal to 60 P divided by two pi NP. So we can say that our MT is equal to 60 times 7.5 times 10 exponent 3 divided by 2 pi times 300. If you calculate this, what do you have? Please calculate it and give us the value. Do you have it? Hello. Are you there? Sir, we are coming. Sir, we had uh, two, three, eight. Two, three, eight point. Seven, three. Seven, three. And the unit is? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have MT to be equal to this value. All right. Now we need to determine, to determine the rest, we have to determine gamma. Uh, gamma, which is the Cone angle, how do we determine it? Uh, let's go to this diagram and see something there.
Okay. Let's look at this one. Over here, you see that we have gamma, okay? And this gamma, we can derive a formula for it easily. If you look at it, you'll see that these two gears, they are meeting at this point, which is a cone center O. All right. The pitch circle diameter for the gear, DG, from this point to that point, at right, this point, if we extend this line here a little bit, you can say that the pitch circle diameter is from this point up to this point. Is that correct? Please respond. Eh? Uh, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, then, sir. then also, if we extend this line, this direction to the center, and this one here, we can see that the distance from that point to that point is equal to the p circle diameter for the pinion. That's also correct, right? And, and you will see that if we pick this point here, pick this point and this point, let's say this point here is um, O P. Let's put this point to be capital P. Look at the, we look at, we have formed a triangle, okay? We have triangle A, B, O, P. Is that correct? And we can see gamma, which is the cone angle for the pinion, to be the diagonal as a line connecting O to A. The angle between it and OB is the angle gamma, this small gamma here, which is the cone angle for the pinion. How do we determine that angle? You will agree with me that AB, line AB is equal to DP on two. Now we're able to establish it earlier. Are you in agreement? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also, we can also say that the line OB. OB is equal to D G on two. You also agree with that? O to B is equal to D G divided by two. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So if we want to find the angle gamma, what to be the formula? I want to find this, what is the formula? So here we can say that tan, tan gamma is equal to what? Mm -hmm. Turn of this angle. They are correct.
Is the formula correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So we can say that the tan of gamma is equal to the pitch circle diameter for the pinion divided by the pitch circle diameter of the gear. And if that is true, then we can determine the value for gamma. Okay, so from that point, from that point, we can say that tan gamma is equal to d p over dg and this is equal to we know the values for dp and dg so we have 150 divided by 200 that'll give us what so turn inverse of that gamma is equal to tan inverse of 150. What's the angle of gamma? Thirty six point eight seven. Thirty six point eight seven. Okay. So we have gamma to be equal to thirty six point eight seven degrees. Oh. <clears throat> From here, we can determine the mean radius. So R M is equal to DP and two minus B divided by two sine gamma. So this will give us 150 on two minus, the face with B was given to us as 40 millimeters. So minus 40 divided by two, the sign of 36.87, what's the answer? RM is what? Sixty three. Sixty three. Okay. Then from here we can determine the tangential component of the force PT, we know that to be equal to MT divided by R divided by RM. So that is equal to the MT, we have calculated it to be equal to what? We have MT to be 
divided by, we have to convert it to meters, so 0 0.063. What's the answer? Ah. Is what? Three seven eight eight nine point three seven three six five okay and that is in newtons then uh, from here we can calculate calculate the value for PR. So no PR to be equal to um, P T tan alpha cos gamma. And that will be three seven eight nine point three six five. And alpha. Alpha is the pressure angle which was given to us as 20. And then cos gamma, which is 36.87. So calculate this and give us the value. The answer is what? One one zero three point three seven one. Is what? Come again. One one zero three three seven one. One one zero three one. Yes, please. Okay. Then we need to determine the Asia component PA, which is PT than alpha and uh, sine gamma. And that is equal to 3789 than 20 cause 36.87. What's the answer? The answer is what? Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, mission. What's the answer? Are you with me? Yes, sir. So we are pointing. You have delayed.
Say. So, so one one zero three. Which, which, which one is that one? The PA. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. This is not cause, it's sign, eh? Uh, so it's not. That one is for the first part. This one is sign. Sign here. Yeah. So correct that then. Complete okay. Again. Eight two seven. Eight two seven. Seven. Point five three. Point five three. Yeah. Also in Newtons. Okay. Now that we have all the forces, what is left is to draw the free body diagram. So these are the forces we are looking for. Are you okay? Let's see. So now, how will it look like the free body diagram? So we have to draw the free body diagram for the pinion and the gear. So first, if we look at the arrangement, Okay, so these are the forces we have. So we have to free by that we have to isolate them and have all the components by themselves. So we have, first of all, the pinion, the pinion. Let's say that that's the pinion. So let's say we have the pinion like this. Now what to be the forces on the pinion? So first of all, we are going to have a radial component of the force Go in this direction. Let me use a different color. So this is a radial component of the force. Then we are going to have An easier component go in this direction. So this radial component, what is the value? The value is 
1103.371. The other component we got eight two seven point five three. Is that correct? Ah. Yes, then uh, we need to have a tangential component of the force. And that tangential component of the force um, is going this direction. And the value of the tangential component, we determined it to be three seven eight nine point three six five. And they are in Newton, so we need to put the units. So if you pick the Uh, what do you call it? If we pick the pinion, this will be the arrangement of forces on it. And the pinion is rotating in that direction. If we take the gear alone, Let's say that this is the gear. The forces, we said that the easier force on the pinion will be the radial force on the gear. So that force will act in this direction. And the value is, what's the value? I uh, have talk. 1103.371. That is what? Is it this force or that one? Which one? So it will be the radial force on the pinion. And that value is what? 1103.37. The radial force on the pinion will be what on the gear? It will be the easier force on the gear. Okay, so that will be this one, right? Yes, sir. So we have 1103.371. Why is it that one? That's the easier force on the gear. Okay. Oh, you don't understand. So you have turned it upside down. How? No, it's not upside down. Look at the arrangement here. See this one? Can you see the main diagram? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Where is the gear? This is the pinion. That is the gear. So it's the same arrangement. I'm having. OK, sir. Are you OK? So the radial force here will be the easier force on the gear. Then the easier force on the pinion will be the radial force on the gear. So this force here will be 
will be 827.53 newtons. And uh, the other force will be the, um, tangential force, okay? So the device is rotating in this direction. So we are going to have a tangential force and that will be on another direction. And the value of the tangential force is the same as that on the pinion, 3789.365 Newtons. Any question? No question. All right, so that is that. And um, we have to have one assignment. So I'm going to send to you, I'll forward the question to you through your class rep as your assignment. And God willing, next week we will have the presentation and our last quiz to complete the semester. Any question? Sir, please this recorded section. We upload it. So. Yeah, I've recorded, so I'll send to you. Um. I hope you understood everything. Yes, sir. Thank you. And God bless you. Sorry for taking so much of your time. See you later. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.